For the past four months, my mornings have been a cycle of terror. In that space between sleep and wakefulness, before conscious thought kicks in and control is back in your hands, I am gripped by all-encompassing fear and panic. The cries that escape me aren't the exclamations of one startled or jolted, but of one in a broken state of illogical and primal dread, like an injured and cornered street dog wailing and yelping in the dim hope that the sound might somehow dissuade its attacker. It's difficult to bring to mind the memories of what rushes through my mind during these spells. Like I said, it always occurs the instant I'm awake. Actually, that might not be entirely accurate. By the time I found myself aware enough to understand what's happening, I'm already screaming. That same autopilot that causes you to breathe, to unconsciously toss and turn in your sleep, forces me into that last-ditch state. Screaming. The screams scare me. The times a person gives their all in terms of making a noise, of yelling, vocalizing, are far and few between. Few sane people would ever just cry out to the top of their lungs for fear of noise complaints or the police being called for suspicion of some kind of murder taking place. Hearing that full-fledged no bar shrieking from my own mouth and my instincts continuing them to the point of a whimpering stutter, it leaves my chest tight and my heart racing. And like I said, I've gotten the noise complaints. I've had the police at my door. The only reason I've not been evicted is because I know my landlord personally. He knows what I've been through. I'm medicated. At first I was honest with the doctors and therapists I saw, but I was on track for getting locked up. So I started lying. I told them I couldn't sleep, that I was waking up in the middle of the night, but that's not true. I sleep as much as any regular person. It's just when I'm waking that's the issue. How I'm waking, I suppose. I've tried all kinds of sleeping pills to see if I can dull myself into shutting down that reaction, but after nearly dying from an overdose, I gave up on that idea. Whatever this is, whatever the cause is, it must be on the same level as my breathing and how base, how core to my being it is. That scares me. I'm not crazy. I function as well as any other average person when it comes to day-to-day -day life. I hold down a job, I pay my bills, I have friends. It's just the mornings, where I wake up screaming bloody murder as if an air raid siren has just gone off. The timing of it seems to fall in line with my circadian rhythm. When my panic is over and I check my phone, it's usually only 20 minutes or so until my alarm goes off. I've always looked for patterns in it. I've researched REM sleep and sleep paralysis and tried natural cures like meditating and scented candles, incense, but in spite of my best and most committed efforts, nothing changes. I don't want to consider anything drastic or illogical. Like I said, I'm not crazy. I don't get used to it. Let me try to describe the process, a little slower and more meticulously. I get into bed, I fall asleep, I don't dream, or at least I don't remember the dream. My unconscious subconsciousness takes the wheel, and as is normal for a person, I have no memory from my time asleep. Then, all of a sudden, I'm thrust back into the driver's seat, but I'm already screaming. Screaming at the top of my lungs, the effort of it leaving my breath shallow like I'm suffocating, but I'm already scrambling too. I'm already panicked and frightened, my heart racing, and it takes me a good few seconds before I really have control and finally stop. I'm left panting, still overwhelmed with a full-bodied dread, a fear of something. People watch scary movies and play horror games because it's a controlled adrenaline, a fun rush that makes you jump. What I experience every morning is terror. It's not fun. It's horrid. More than anything, I wanted to stop. I woke up early last night, but I wasn't awake, not fully. Looking back on it now, I can't even tell if it was a dream or not. What I experienced was as follows. My eyes opened, I was laid on my left side, facing the room, one hand rested in front of me on the mattress right at the edge of the bed, 
the other under the blanket. I tried to shift to get more comfortable, but I was stuck. I've never experienced sleep paralysis before, but I know well enough about it. Knowing didn't stop me from panicking. As a rush of terrifying stories came to mind I'd heard from friends and people online, I tried to suppress them as I sent commands to my hands, arms, and legs. My body ignoring the will, I pushed towards moving as my eyes locked forward, open, and while I was in the midst of this personal turmoil, I saw it. In the pitch darkness of my room, against the wall, was a shape, an outline, murky and black. I stared at it, my chest feeling cold as I tried to reason it away. This is exactly what they told me about. I just need to control my thoughts. Those were the words I told myself, trying to calm down. But then it started moving. The slow, methodical first step it took towards me was what gave it more definition. Its body was jagged in shape, like something malnourished and thin. It had been about five feet in height when it was stood against the wall, but as soon as it began to move, it stooped into a gradual slouch like a predator moving low in the grass. It was painfully slow, creeping towards me while giving my frozen body every second I needed to absorb it. From the lack of light, discerning anything about it was difficult, but the closer it came with those methodical yet bestial movements, the more I could see. Thin arms bent at the elbows into long wrists that ended in hands with spindly fingers that would ever so slowly flex curling inwards, but not quite into a fist, then stretching outwards again as if it were fantasizing about getting something between them. Its back had a distinct curve from the way it was stood, leading up to a distended neck, then a head that was just a little too long. Silence creeping step after silence creeping step, the thing drew closer to my bedside. All I could do was watch praying in my imprisoned mind to whatever god would hear to let me wake up, to escape this paralysis and be rid of this torturous vision. Finally, it stopped, standing inches from where I lay. It was so close I could hear a strained, labored breathing from within the core of its chest. Only now, with it this close, did I realize its sheer size. If it were to stand up straight, I am certain its bulbous head would reach the ceiling, the thing remained there, slowly rising from its crouched stance to loom over me, the sound of its rattling breath creaking like a ship at high sail, those oversized hands still slowly and obsessively grasping at the air, rose and reached towards me. Whilst I was entirely unable to move, I still felt like I was shivering in fear, my vision blurring from tears of fear welling in my eyes. I could feel the long, cold, wet fingers close over my shoulders as it took hold of me, its face coming nearer to mine. The thing smelt of blood and pus, foul and rotten. It took a long, slow inhale, and as it did, its mouth opened, splitting across the lower center of its head with dripping lines of black, tar-like saliva that drooled down onto my bedsheets. And then, it screamed. It screamed and began shaking me violently, throttling me as it shrieked and roared and wailed like the incarceration of every lunatic ever locked away. The sound so loud it should have burst my eardrums, the shaking so violent it should have broken my neck. I woke up screaming. I screamed my throat hoarse. Then I coughed and cried, standing up from my bed. I kept wheezing, barely able to breathe, then felt my stomach rise. Too weak to move, I vomited there on my bed, a splatter of sheer red. Another few coughs and I collapsed back, blood and bile trickling down my pale cheek as I lie there in a daze, panting raggedly. My eyes lazily turned to the spot the apparition had appeared in before, the screaming, rasping shade. Nothing. Of course, nothing. No sign it had ever been there. When my strength returned, I called off work and saw a doctor. I told her about what had happened that morning, which prompted her to run a number of tests. She put me through a lung function test, then a chest x-ray, then a blood test. The same day, 
They performed a biopsy. A few hours ago, I was diagnosed with early on-stage lung cancer. Thanks to the near-instant diagnosis, it's treatable. I still have a life ahead of me. That's why I'm now grateful, in spite of the fear, the panic, and the trauma, that every morning I wake up screaming. They are watching. I can't tell you how I know this right now. I can't see them. But I know they are watching. They always are. You need to understand that I've seen them before. I really have. But they don't like that. They don't like to be looked at. It angers them. I'm realizing I should probably explain to you what I'm talking about. After all, I don't know if this ever happens to anyone else. Uh, what if I'm the first? Although, I don't think that's important right now. What is important is how this started. I think it was a weekend. Wait, no, that's not. There was this one time before the weekend. I didn't think much of it then, but now that I think back, it must have been relevant. It was a Wednesday, and it's... Uh, wait, maybe it was a Thursday instead. Anyway, I don't think it matters now. The key point is that the day started like any other workday. I got up at 7 a.m. when my alarm went off. I slid my slippers on, I went to the bathroom, made myself coffee, got dressed and sat on the couch to watch some TV as I enjoyed my caffeinated beverage. I do this every morning without fail. It feels almost ritualistic at times, but I enjoy when things are in order. Predictable, when things just make sense. When the clock hits 8 a.m., I get in my car to go to work, as I always do. And that morning was no different. Thursday. It was Thursday. I, I remember now. Although I once again realize that this isn't... Uh, anyway, I left for work. It's usually about a half an hour drive. I started working at nine, but I like to be in early. It gives me a while to get things sorted before the day starts. I like it that way. So I got in as usual, parked in spot number ten, pulled the handbrake, Turned the car off, grabbed my bag, patted my pockets to make sure I haven't forgotten anything, and locked the car. As I walked into the office, our receptionist welcomed me, as she usually... I just realized that today is also Thursday. That feels ironic, or poetic in some way. Or it could be neither, it's just funny how we live our lives in that seven-day system. Uh, why seven? Why not a more convenient number, like five or a ten? I'm off track again. As I was saying, she welcomes me the same way she always does. Did you have a safe drive? To which I responded, I always do. She knows I like consistency. I'm not a big fan of change. I made my way to my office. I should probably explain what I do. I, I'm a manager at a small IT company. We do a lot of things, but mostly we sell printers. Anyway... I got to my office and placed my bag near the window in the same place I always do, and I sat in my chair. It was a nice chair, uh, comfortable. I mean, uh, maybe not as comfortable as the one I had at home. Uh, that one is really nice. I bought it two years ago on a sale, and it has been one of the best things I ever... Uh, this isn't relevant, I'm just... Never mind. As I switched my computer on, uh, that's when the first strange thing happened. That's when the first strange thing happened. Not with the computer. The computer was fine. It was like a short gust of cold wind, which was strange in an office with a closed door and windows, but I thought nothing of it at the time. After all, I don't know much about wind or thermodynamics or anything like that. But it happened a few times during that day. And every time it did, I looked at my shadow, cast by the sunlight coming in through the window and made dim by the light in the office. And now that I think about it, I can't explain why I did that. I mean, if I knew then what I know now, things might have been different, but at the time I brushed it off. It was an anomaly. I don't like anomalies. They don't fit into everyday life. I prefer when things are in order, like when I put my dishes away and 
The cutlery always goes back the same way into the drawer. Uh, knives, forks, and then spoons. It's how my parents did it. It's how I do it. And it's how I'll continue to do it. Although this, uh, once again, it doesn't relate to the story. I'm... I'm sorry. That wasn't the only thing that happened that day. I mean, uh, this cold wind thing happened multiple times, but that's not what I mean. This other thing happened during the night. It was a few minutes past 2 a.m. This happened to me sometime. I wake up, I go to the kitchen, I drink a glass of water, I lay back in bed, and drift back into sleep as I think about miscellaneous things. That night, however, was different. As I awoke and opened my eyes, I glimpsed something darting out of my bedroom. Not quite a person. It wasn't like a solid mass. It was kind of like a shadow, but not really. I can't explain it, but I also didn't think much of it at the time. Just my head playing tricks on me in the dark, I thought. I'm a rational person in most... Uh, it was 12 minutes past 2 a.m. I remember now, because I like the number 12. It's not the same as a 10, but there's something structured about the number 12 that makes a dozen. Uh, half a dozen is how many eggs I buy, uh, which is also confusing because eggs are sold in packs of 6, uh, 10, and 15, uh, usually at least. And these are strange numbers to go by, but... But I'm off topic again. As I was saying, I didn't think much of it. I did, however, check my entire house just to be sure, and everything seemed fine. Until the weekend. A Sunday, to be more precise. I remember because I don't really like Sundays. This is also when I noticed that something was wrong. It may have been my day off, but I dislike change, so... My morning was much the same. I got up at 7 a.m. when my alarm went off. I slid my slippers on, went to the bathroom, I made myself a coffee. I got dressed, and then I sat on the couch and watched some TV as I enjoyed my caffeinated beverage. I didn't have anything planned for that day, so I was going to work on my project. I'm writing a book, you see. It's nowhere near finished, but it's coming along slowly. It's a love story and I'm leaning towards a sad ending. Uh, or, uh, I was, but I don't think I'll be getting a chance to write anymore. Before I can decide what I was going to do with my day, I saw something out of the corner of my eye. A movement. I looked down at what it was. And this will sound strange, uh, I know, but it was my shadow. It was uh, twitching, I think. It's hard to describe exactly what it looked like. It was kind of like a vibration, but... Slower, uh, more deliberate, kind of like when a tree branch sways in the wind, except you know it's not the winds, but something pulling on the branch. You can tell that sort of thing if you look close enough. Or at least, uh, I can. I've always known I was different from other people. I tend to notice things others don't. Things that seem obvious to me, others just walk by. Like that one time when... Uh, stop. No, uh, I mean me... Uh, I'm sorry, I just... I, never mind. As my shadow made these subtle movements, I began to look around my room. Maybe it was just the source of light that was causing this, but... Uh, no. The light was coming from my window, from the sun. Not to mention that all other shadows around the room were fine. Stationary, like a predator, waiting for the right moment. That thought, at the time, made me feel vulnerable. But before I had time to panic, it stopped. I was left there just thinking at a spot on my carpet, a dark spot that wasn't there before. It just looked like someone dropped a tomato sauce-covered meatball on the floor, then tried to wipe it with a dry towel. I tried to clean it. I had this fabric cleaner I use regularly for carpets and my couch. It's very good at getting stains out. I cleaned both wine and blood stains with it, and it has uh, no problem. I wonder, what do you think about... The stain did not come off the carpet. It was just there, mocking my attempt to remove it. I just left it and moved on with my day, occasionally glancing over at it. I was too distracted to do anything productive, so I just procrastinated for the rest of the day, cleaned some other parts of the house. When the day came to an end, and I decided to double-check if all my doors and windows were locked. I didn't really know why, but I did not feel safe that day. When I went to bed, I started to undress, and I noticed that there was a hole in my sock. 
I didn't feel the hole earlier. But now that I know it's there, it's painfully obvious that it's there. How did I miss it? I once again woke up that night. This time it was at 3.01 a.m. I definitely remember that. This time there was no figure, nothing dashing out of the room. I just woke up. I got up to grab a glass of water, and as I did, I glanced at my shadow on the wall, which was caused by the moonlight streaming in through the window. As I looked at it, I expected it to move again, but it didn't. I did, however, feel something brush against me, uh, I think. I tried looking around at what it could have been, but it came up blank. As I looked back at my shadow, I noticed some spots on it. Uh, no, uh, not on it. They were on the wall. The same kind of spots as the one on the carpet. At this point, I'm at a loss. I mean, uh, does your shadow bleed? Once my alarm woke me up, I did the same thing I always do. But when I went to leave, I realized my car keys were gone. Uh, sorry, uh, let me rephrase that for you. My keys were in their usual spot, but my car key that I usually attached to them was not there. I spent a solid ten minutes looking in every spot my key could have ended up, and I could not find them. To you, or uh, to most people, this may not seem too strange, uh, misplacing an item. But I don't lose things, ever. I gave up looking for my keys and decided to take the bus. I didn't have to wait long, thankfully. The bus went past many places I don't usually go by, uh, like the coffee place that I had my first date in, or the convenience store that I've only been to three times since I moved. This reminds me, I need to buy some AAA batteries after work, uh, the ones in my TV remote are getting low, which is causing the remotes to... Wait. I did lose something once. I was eight, and I found a coin in the park. A strange coin I'd never seen before, but... When I got home, it wasn't in my pockets where I left it. I got to work on time. It was a little later than usual, but I wasn't late. I didn't see or feel any strange things for the most part. There was another one of those stains that formed on the floor in my office, but I didn't give it much attention, because this time I heard things. It's hard to describe noise. Kind of like the hum of a microwave, but uh, sharper. Does that make sense? Maybe it was closer to white noise, and it wasn't coming from anywhere in particular. I just heard it at the same volume whenever I went. You might imagine that would drive me mad, but it was very quiet. So quiet, in fact, that I didn't realize it until about halfway through my day. It was only then that I realized that I've been hearing it all day. It is kind of how you can cut yourself slightly and not notice it, and it only starts to hurt once you acknowledge it's there. This tends to happen with minor paper cuts. Sorry, I don't usually go off topic so much. I kept hearing this noise after I left work, and even after I got home. It wasn't getting any louder and quieter, it was just uh, there. I spent some more time looking for my car keys with no luck. I decided I'll grab the key tomorrow and get a new one cut, and I went to bed. The next day is supposed to be Tuesday. And to be honest, I don't really like Tuesdays. This night was better. I did not wake up during the night, but there was another problem that I had no way of predicting. I awoke at 6.55 a.m. I know, because I was looking at my watch. I had five more minutes before my alarm, so I decided just to stay in bed and enjoy my five minutes. But then, after several minutes, more than just five, my alarm didn't go off. Which makes more sense when you take into consideration that my phone was gone. This part, however, didn't make much sense. I left it on the nightstand like I always do. There has never been a day that this wasn't the case. No, wait. There was this one time where my phone broke and I had to wait a day until I... I don't think I'm alone in this room anymore. I was confused, to say the least. I had my things... Important things just disappearing for no reason. There was nothing I could do, really, but move on with my day and try to figure something out later. This morning was a little less structured than I'd like it to be. Like, I didn't have my coffee, and there were all these spots that kept appearing over my shadow everywhere I went. They didn't seem harmful, but they still confused me to no end. I couldn't think straight. 
I eventually got to work and tried to take my mind off things by getting some work done. Do you ever think to yourself that it can't get any worse? Well, it seems like every time I think that, life just needs to prove me wrong. Which sounds illogical, I know. I pride myself on my rational thinking, unlike most of the people I encounter, whose collective brain power couldn't turn a light bulb on. I wonder where the phrase train of thought originated from. Back to life tearing me a new one. Or tearing it off in this case, I suppose. When I looked at my shadow, after the sun came out from under clouds, it was gone. My shadow just uh, wasn't there. This sounds insane. All solid objects block light and therefore cast a shadow. And last I checked, I am a solid mass. But there I was, looking at an empty spot on the ground where my shadow used to be. And it was at this moment that the humming I heard the day before came back. Or maybe it just got louder. It still wasn't loud, but it was more noticeable now. I was confused and scared, and I didn't know what to do at this point. I decided to say I didn't feel well and go home. After I spoke to my boss, I headed towards the exit. It was then that I noticed the first one of them. He was standing on the other side of the hallway facing me. He looked like a shadow, but like a three-dimensional shadow, like a dark, translucent person, just standing there, not moving, just watching me from afar. There are many of them. In fact, they are outside my room right now. I can't see them, but I know they can see me, and they can see you as well. When I got outside my office, I looked up to find the sun, then I looked on the ground to where my shadow should have been, and it wasn't there. Just like in my office. I ran back to my car. I couldn't think of anything better to do than just go home. I didn't know if it was still safe in there, but I had no other choice. As I drove home, I started to see more of them. The shadowy figures. They weren't as obvious as the one in the office. These I could only see out of the corner of my eyes, but I knew that they were there just like I know now that there is someone outside my house. I can hear them whisper. I got home, and I really needed to check something. This lack of a shadow thing, I mean, it scared me. But it didn't hurt or feel strange or anything like that. I felt uh, normal. I switched the light on in the living room and picked up a book. And there it was. A rectangular shadow of the book with nothing around it. Nothing holding it, according to the shadow. I could cover the book with my body, and it made no difference. Uh, somehow this felt uh, comforting, yet it was strange, but at least it was uh, consistent. How would you act if your shadow vanished? I looked out the window to see if I could see any more of them. The shadows, I mean. There were only a few people walking about, and nothing out of the ordinary. Until I saw one. He wasn't standing and watching like the others were. He was just uh, walking. I mean, like a regular person, minding his own business. He walked from one end of the street and passed where I could no longer see him. Or it. He didn't notice me. Maybe because he couldn't see that I had no shadow. I tried to sleep that night. I really did. I felt safe enough in my own home that I thought I could, but I spent all night trying and... What if our shadows are the reason we can't see them? What if our shadows protect us from them? We were never meant to see them, and I think our shadows are the reason we can't. What if they wanted to harm me? What if I escaped the illusion? How do you know that you're not dreaming right now? Wednesday was more terrifying than I could have imagined. They called me. The figures, I mean. Not on my mobile phone. That was still gone. But on my house phone. I thought it was my work calling, since I didn't show up to work that day. But when I answered the phone, all I heard was that noise I've been hearing. But this time, it was much louder. There was no voice on the other side, just a static-like noise. I unplugged my phone and tossed it in the corner. I half expected the noise to continue after I unplugged the phone. But it didn't. All I heard was silence. Even the quiet noise I've been hearing all this time stopped. 
I was standing in my room in pure silence, and it felt... I forgot to buy the batteries, the ones for the remote. As I was saying, they tried to contact me, but what did they want from me? I also kept seeing them walking by on the streets outside. Most of them paid no attention to me, but a few turned their heads. I don't know if they saw me. I did my best to keep low, but I haven't been myself lately. I've been forgetting things and misplacing them. I found my car key as well. It was in the freezer for some reason. If you were to look, do you think they would look back? Once the sun started to set, I felt more uneasy than before. I decided I needed to try and wait them out. Maybe my shadow will uh, grow back. I'm not sure if that's possible, but I don't have much of a choice. I refuse to leave my house knowing they are out there, waiting for me. I took all my food and some other useful things and locked myself in my bedroom. I hope they won't find me here. I just realized I should have brought a can opener with me. But it's too late now. I can hear them outside my front door, trying to get in. Do not let them. This brings us to today. Thursday. I don't know what to do. I think they are trying to get in. They've been banging against my front door for almost an hour now. I don't know if they can get in. What if I'm safe in here? What do they want from me? More importantly, what will they do to me once they get to me? The banging is louder now. I think they're trying to break through the door. If I whisper, will you whisper back? They are outside my house now. It seems they are smarter than I thought. They are trying to convince me to open my bedroom door. I barricaded it, you see. I put all my furniture against my door so they can't get in. They are clever. They think if they tell me that they are the police that I will open the door. But I will not fall for their tricks. If they somehow do get in, I'll use the kitchen knife I brought here with me. I just haven't decided yet if I'll use it on them or... or on me. Does your shadow bleed?